This uh, next round includes questions from each organization, the Greater Peterborough Chamber of Commerce, Women's Business Network, and the DBIA. They have one question each, and each candidate will have one minute to answer each question. And again, just a reminder of the rebuttal rule, maximum two rebuttals per question, 30 seconds max on the rebuttal. If we feel as if it's getting into some lively discussion, we may relax that depending on how things go. So we'll begin at the far end of the table, Sandra Duick representing the Greater Peterborough Chamber of Commerce. Sandra? Thank you. In a recent chamber survey of, on election issues, employment and job creation stood out as the number one concern. As council, you will be setting the conditions for job creation. What are the three most important strategies you will use to accomplish this? Okay, we'll start with Miriam because Tom was the first to speak <coughs> and then we're gonna vary it as we go down so everyone has a chance to answer each question first. Miriam? And I have one minute, correct? One minute, yes. For me, an effective municipal government takes three broad applications and approaches to creating jobs. The first is invest in infrastructure. The second is about smart regulations. And the third is all about partnering with private and public sectors to promote this community of ours. What do I mean by investing in infrastructure? I mean transportation. I mean providing service industrial land to new businesses so that they can come here and flourish. I mean ensuring that we have the right arts and culture and sports and recreation infrastructure in place. When I talk about smart regulations, I'm referring to the attitude of wanting to see businesses succeed, finding ways to help them get there, a smart official plan, and a competitive tax structure. And when I talk about partnering to promote this place, I'm talking tourism, I'm talking about promoting our business, our community to other businesses, um, and making better use of our existing service lands. Well, thank you. Miriam? Daryl Bennett. Well, job creation is a uh, high priority with all levels of government, and certainly the municipal government is no different. The problem is, from an operational standpoint, we are limited in what we can do. If the city of Peterborough creates a job, it costs the taxpayers money. We have to look at creating the environment for jobs to be created. And I'm going to strongly suggest that over the last four years, we've done a very, very good job of that. Councilor McWilliams and I have met with over 200 local businesses looking at interconnecting those businesses to each other, reaching out to the broader community. I look at the Nordia new business for downtown Peterborough, Nordia Bell, and I look at Seneca College and their expansion down at the Peterborough Airport. They did not occur without a lot of work behind the scenes. It was a collaborative effort on behalf of staff and council and the private sector to assist with that. Okay, that's time. <laughs> Ellen. Uh, thanks, Mike. I've already announced two of the planks in my platform that relate to this. Um, the first is that I believe we should take 80% of economic development spending money. And if we can work in cooperation with the County of Peterborough, that's between three and four million dollars a year. And spend that money helping local business to grow we tend to put an awful lot of effort into some magic bullet of bringing a three or four or 500 company, uh, person company here. But we can go to a company that, hire, that, that employs five and hire two more, or a company that ho hire, uh, employs 10 and hire three more. Um, I think what you'll find with the people who run those businesses, because I've, I've dealt with a lot of them in my role at the Quaker Oats Company and, and since then in my own consulting business, is that they don't have time to do anything except run their business. But if we had the staff available who could go to them, help them with training dollars, promotional dollars, research dollars, staff dollars. We have companies in this city right now that can't get qualified staff. And that's time, anyway. Ellen. Thank you. Thank you. Have a seat. Patty Peters. Um, we have to speak fairly quickly. Economic development needs to be back in the walls of City Hall. Um, there is nothing that is going to be more effective for this community than economic development to be moved back into the walls of City Hall so those very employees that are responsible to the mayor and members of council can work closely together and can respond to us when we wish to have a collective meeting with those, uh, with those staff people. It's a win-win. Dealing with the social issues downtown 
have to be dealt with right away before we can start promoting um, what Peterborough has. Right now it's showing what it doesn't have and what we don't want to show. The province has to come on board, the federal government has to come on board to partner with us to assume re the financial responsibility and programs for those issues. And also long overdue, offering the proper services for the citizens of Peterborough with our own employees, which will expand um, employment opportunities for our, uh, our own employees. Uh, well, that's and time, thanks Patty. Thank you. Tom. Yeah, thank you. I think the problem really is not the lack of work out there that's to be done. The problem is the lack of people that are willing to pay for that work. There are a number, a number of businesses that use volunteer labor and um, people are working and not being paid. They need to be paid a decent wage for their work and not just volunteer. Volunteering does not pay the rent or put food on the table. Thank you, Tom.